Hello, welcome to Exit for Access. My name is Tom, and the current government advice is to stay at home, barricade yourselves in, do not travel, which is essentially the opposite of what uh, what us wagon drivers are doing. But it's okay because we have gone from being an absolute pest on the road to suddenly being crucial. So much so that we're now one of the most important jobs in the whole of the UK, if not the world, because we bring toilet paper. I don't, but others do. In nearly an hour's work, so I've had to stop for a Greg's. Uh, it's, it's hard work. It, it's getting crazy with the quarantines. Everyone's like, you have to stand two meters away in a line, and yeah, crackers. Anyways, I've received a comment, <laughs> and I don't read the comments out normally. This one is it. It's magnificent. Um, <laughs> It's absolutely spectacular, and I have already replied to it, but uh, I found myself just kept thinking about it and just giggling about it. It is one of my favourite comments I think I've ever received, and it's not a very flattering one in fairness, but it's still amazing. Okay, so this is from Chris 777777777 Iffy, I think. Um, I don't know if that's how I trust it. And he starts, you're clearly not a stupid lad. I, I appreciate that, thanks. If you were to perhaps study something online, rather than waste your time doing YouTube videos... I mean, technically YouTube videos are online, but we won't go into that. Yes, they are entertaining, but so is watching a cat take a dump in a cabbage bag. <laughs> So let's, let's just go ahead and ignore the first part of this. Let's just break this down for a second. Okay, so you, I'm guessing by this you like the videos and you think they're entertaining, but you're so <laughs> What? Why? Why? What? <laughs> Monday is not going to plan at all. Um, first went on the way bridge and I was overweight. Then I've gone back over and I'm underweight. So now I'm having to wait for someone else to load me. And as I was walking around the side of the wagon, I got to see this, which seems to be coming from up there. There's actually quite a lot. I don't think that's oil, I think that's hydraulic fluid. Either way, it's definitely not what I needed today. So I'm gonna have to call up Keith and see what the deal is. Gonna get the last of this little bit of shit out at the back. Give it a quick shunt. Ugh. That'll 
do the job. Lovely one. Um, she needs to go to sweep the sweeping out area and I've already received my next job, which is good. What's bad is it's the old brickworks and if I didn't get stuck on the last site, there's a very good chance I'll get stuck on this one again. <laughs> It'll be fine. So this is the brickworks, uh, this is near where I got stuck last week but a bit of sun and it's dried it out quite a lot actually to the point where I'm not worried in the slightest, he says optimistically. Yeah so the old brickworks is living up to its reputation, we've got number one wagon being pulled out now, thing is it's not even loaded yet. <laughs> so we got stuck again, uh, unsurprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does becoming it, it's becoming something of a a thing on this side. It must be said. <laughs> I didn't realise it. I thought they were building houses on here, but they're not looking for coal. I didn't even think that was a thing anymore. But apparently, there's like loads of mines and stuff underneath. Yeah, we're happy with that. Cut it off there. Good man. Thank you very much, sir. It is Tuesday and I had a cracking night at Barton Truck Services. Now you know I was at Barton Truck Services because of the type of bird. And when I say this, I mean <coughs> some places have got pigeons, some places have got crows, some have got seagulls, some have got magpies. Barton has ducks. Why? I don't really know. Um, it just does. You're not going to move for me, are you? Please, can you move for me? I want to go. You're just going to stare at me, aren't you? You're going to actually make me drive around you? You dick. Oh, you're just staring at me like that. Don't worry about it, mate. You're absolutely fine. It's only a 44 to the Arctic. You're a tiny duck, but you still make me drive around you. Right, so, last night, Boris Johnson announced that the UK has gone under lockdown. Well, I technically didn't use the words lockdown, I don't think, but he has, uh, he has made it so everything's under lockdown. And, um, yeah, the curious times these. I don't really know what's going to happen uh, to us in regards to like, what jobs we're going to start getting. Are we going to just continue doing waste? Um, I've heard rumours on the vine mill that we're going to do Tesco runs. Um, my god, more ducks! They're everywhere! Oh, there's pigeons as well. I didn't get the pigeons confused, don't worry. And, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what, uh, what to make of the whole thing. I do feel bad for the people who are stuck at home. And for a long time as well, it's, um, it's not great like it's not great being stuck at home but the way I look at it you have to have a silver lining to everything and 
the silver lining, the thing that you guys should take away from this is there should be a lot less traffic for me on the roads. Um, so that'll be superb. Uh, so I appreciate that, guys. Thank you, cheers, mate. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> huh? Yeah? Fucking hell. <laughs> so, I'm at Eco Power and uh, things have gone a bit mad. Uh, there's people wearing gas masks, that's something that's happening. And I've received a text message from the government saying stay at home which obviously I can't do because I'm in a wagon. Apparently all the service stations have been shut. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. And uh, yeah, it is absolutely and utterly bonkers. That was a spectacularly prompt drop for Biffa in Hartlepool, which is all good. And I've got my next one, and I'm going back to the brickworks. <laughs> Yay for getting stuck again. <laughs> Hopefully not this time, no. This doesn't look good, does it? Hello, sir! Hi! This looks suspicious, you like a good time for a break. <laughs> it's okay, you, you're heading to the old brickworks, aren't you? I am indeed, sir. Do you know the way through Shildon? Uh, is, it, is it accessible via, via Arctic? Yeah, you, one of your lodges has already done it. All right, well, yeah. off we go then. Yeah. <laughs> take a left here. Yeah. Right at the T junction, that'll take you into town. At the mini roundabout, take a right, and it'll drop you to the bottom of this bank. You're a superstar, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So apparently, we can get around this way. Right, here we are at the old brickworks again. And once again, there is no one in the way bridge. Superb. I managed to find my way around the little diversion that they've got there. Bless some poor bugger's got his house on fire, which is why they've shut that section of road down. Um, I've I've been there before, so I definitely feel for the guy. Um, I have a two-hour drive ahead of me, which means I'm going to be arriving into Rossington or Eco Power, or as I call it, the mud pit. Although it's not very muddy at the moment, um, I'll be arriving in there at 4:46, but I need a 30-minute break which means it will be after five o'clock that I arrive there. And as such, I won't be getting tipped tonight, which is a bit frustrating. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not been a bad couple of days. It's just not been, it just feels like not like not a lot 
gone how I would like it to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this fucking sight! <laughs> so I'm stuck again. Um, yep, gonna need pulling out. I'll get my job bar. I'm at Eco Power, and uh, that's the train leaving. Um, what we deliver here gets loaded onto a train, and then it gets taken somewhere that way. But I don't really know where. To a power plant of some description, like a multi-fuel plant. Um, I feel like I've got a full evening to myself to do things, and you know, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Where I got my laptop, play some games, have a bit of a chill evening. I might, uh, I might even break out the toaster. That's going to be exciting. Despite being one of the first here last night, uh, in fact, only one of two that arrived last night, um, I was not the first to be tipped this morning. There was many other people putting before me, which is. Yeah, it was uh, irritating, to say the least. As you can see, I've had to take my high-vis off. That's because of these little black beetles which are everywhere. As soon as I get out of the cab, they just cling to the high-vis. And it, they don't cling to the pants, it's just the top. So they're most like the, the yellow or something like that. Or they're just like me, I don't know. Uh, regardless, I've, uh, I've sacked the top off for now. <laughs> Hopefully they're just exclusive to the northeast and I'm not gonna have them cover me in shot and I arrived at uh, half four, maybe like quarter past four was it? It's now 7.30 and um, I've been for a walk down to the, um, down to the facilities and there's rumours that we might not be in until 10 o'clock tomorrow. I went to bed at nine last night and I told the guys in the security office 
I'll, uh, I'll let him know when I'm up. And I got up at half five. <sighs> Hoping to get in nice and early. It's now half seven. And he reckons it's going to be at least another couple of hours. Ah, oh, thank God. So after 16 hours of waiting, I have finally been allowed to join the other queue, <laughs> which allows me to go in and tip. And I'm number two in the second queue, so all is good. Oh, God, I forgot to do the paperwork. 16 hours and I didn't do the paperwork. As a wagon driver, there are three things you don't want to happen on a Thursday. The first is to run out of ingredients to make coffee, like milk. The second is for Greg's to be not shut everywhere. And the third is to be sent 200 miles in the complete wrong direction to home. So anyways, this morning I've run out of milk, um, so I can't make any coffee. Greg's is still shut nationwide because of coronavirus, and I'm off to Cambridge, so yay! <laughs> We're on about two hours away from Huntingdon now and I have been spending a little bit of my time looking at the other side of the dual carriageway, more particularly on some of the vehicles, some of the vans that are going past. And although I see a lot of key workers, I see some that I'm a little skeptical about. Now obviously as we have firmly established I am no expert in things but the way I look at it with contractors is surely if you can put the word emergency and it sounds right they're the ones that should be out I'll give you a few examples um, emergency plumber obviously we need them guys just in case emergency electrician emergency builder they all sound good Emergency carpet fitter. Mm. Emergency sofa. Again, not so much. Emergency gardener. Quick, Martha, get the emergency gardener. See, it doesn't sound right, does it? Okay, so my plan for this evening was to have to park up near where I'm going, which is an hour and a half away, and I can't for the life remember what the town is, where the sat nav's taking me. And I was thinking I'm going to have to sit out in this little town, and I was really wanting to order a pizza tonight, because um, cause I was. Uh, I, I was going to try and come up with a good reason, but no, because I was. And um, I've called the guy who's loading us, expecting him to say, oh, I'll be there at half five, six, seven o'clock in the morning, whatever like that. And he says, oh, I'll well, tell you what, when, let me know 10 minutes before you come and I'll, uh, I'll just come down and load you. What an absolute freaking hero. You, sir, are definitely my champion of the week. I, uh, this means that I should, in theory, be able to get myself over towards Nottingham ish and somewhere close to where it has pizza
Well, it's Friday and we're almost at Woody Fuels and despite an understanding between me and the sat-nav who I thought I was getting along with um, but we had an understanding about not taking me down this road however here we are again on this road and it's not too bad some of the time but there are a couple of rather narrow bits like this bridge <laughs> <laughs> where you have to near enough get on the grass to get round it and then we have to just about hit that wall and we'll bring it round slowly and hopefully if we're super lucky the, uh, the trailer won't take out the bridge there we are lovely job easy as that never again sat nav um, it is super foggy today, I don't know what gives me that, but uh, it has been all the way down as you've probably seen on the time lapse footage. I got um, loaded by a guy called Terry last night, who was an absolute superstar. Um, I can't believe like, he actually came out to load me up, and I even got the pizza as well. Um, so, all in all, last night was good. And we are heading in the correct direction, we're heading north means we're heading towards home. Hello. Morning mate, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, how are you? Uh, yeah, not bad. Uh, they've rejected the entire load here, uh, what do you feel? They've rejected it, what for? Uh, they literally don't have the room for it. Alright, no worries, Cheers. bye! Sorry, okay, lad. There's good news and there's bad news. After about an hour and 40 minutes of waiting, the decision has been made that I'll get tipped here. <laughs> Took an hour and 45 minutes to decide this. Um, the bad news is the previous driver, the one who was supposedly the last driver to deliver here this week, said it's horrendous getting around the back because of all of the stuff and he's tipped so it's going to be even worse for me now the way i'm going to have to get around is there's three nasty little corners as such including a way bridge that i've got to get onto it's not too bad, except I've got to do it in reverse, and it's all going to be on my blind side. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a thing that's going to happen this morning. When I arrived at Woody Fuels, there was another driver coming out looking very stressed out. It's, it's bloody tight around there, you'll have a hard time. And apparently uh, most of the drivers that I get there, they're all saying the same thing. And I went around the back, I got in, and I was like, it's not that bad. I was thinking, does that make me a really good driver? And suddenly it, thought, it occurred to me, it might not be that. It might be just because of Travis Perkins and all of the sites that I've been to that are super narrow, I've just become numb to that anxiety of hitting things. <laughs> My brain just kind of blocked it out and I'm no longer bothered about it. It's a bit like they say, um, if, you, if you meet your phobias head on, then you'll stop being scared of them, like I'm scared of spiders and supposedly if you start exposing yourself to spiders and holding them and doing all this you'll no longer care about them, I mean don't get me wrong, spiders can go f*** themselves and I'd sooner burn a house down than go anywhere near them, but the principle is there. We 
Right, well that was another spectacular week. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button and leave me a comment. And also share, send it to someone, send it to a mate, send it to anyone, it's all good as long as it's shared.